Will there be another NLC strike soon as Labour and government has disagreed over the implementation of the minimum wage? Now, a serial killer is on the loose in Port Harcourt. What is the police doing to resolve the cases of murdered women? This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anakal. The Nigerian police investigating the murders of at least eight women lured to hotels in the southern city of Port Harcourt said they had arrested a suspect. Five deaths in the last month have sparked fears of serial killings targeting suspected sex workers. A wave of protests by women activists in the city, the capital uh, of River State, has uh, called a lot of things to question. And I, I have in the studio Ugochuku Ikeaka. He's a political analyst. It's good to have you join us, Ugo. Thank you for having me. And just a few minutes ago, I realized that you have lived in Port Harcourt before, <laughs> so you have a fair idea yeah. of what Port Harcourt is like. Um, so a lot of the women who are out there protesting are protesting against the fact that Number one, women are being targeted. Number two, there's this presumption that the women who died or were victims of these murders were all prostitutes. And, and they feel that that is not a fair, you know, tag to give to those women. Because anybody could go to a hotel does not mean that you're a prostitute. Am I right? Yeah. It's, even if you're a prostitute and you decide to go to a hotel, you've not, you've not committed any crime. Uh, it's sad that we're in a country where uh, this 21st century prostitution is still termed illegal. Although, although in today's world, we'd probably prefer to call them sex workers. Yeah, well, yeah. The, 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 the right term is sex workers. And uh, it's just that Nigeria, who, 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 down here, we learn to how to demonize people. Uh, you know, what, we know what they say, if you want to kill a dog, you, give, call, it a you give it a bad name. So, uh, you see, what's sad over the last few days, for me, uh, what happened is, is, is we've got to see again where the state has shown that is uh, that the ability to protect is season they doesn't have it all right for example uh from the last count up to five women have lost their life to this serial killer and uh, the first question is what, what is the governor of river state doing all right the first person died the second person died the third person died the fourth and the fifth person so uh, because people cry because we, because people in river state across across the country on social media talked about it okay what is happening our women are dying or what is happening who is who, who, who is to be blamed? Who is doing this? So at the end of the day, uh, these are things that when it happens in other civilized places, people get to resign because they failed in their duty. So if you have a responsibility to protect the lives uh, of people and you're failing to do that, that is the most important. Thing. So uh, for example, uh, the Deputy Commissioner of Police in River State, Chris, and one framed it that uh, people should tell women not to go into prostitution, and that is why they get killed. And that's like that's a very uh, I don't want to that's that's a very foolish comment to make. For someone that's that high ranking, you're, you're a senior police officer, you're saying something like that. The first Being a senior police officer does not mean that you're educated enough to be diplomatic in your, in your you know, it's not, it, it, or it, sensitive in it's, your statements, it's not even does about, it? It's not even about being diplomatic, it's about saying the right thing. Right, because and that's what if, I'm saying. Yeah, if, if if you handle such a sensitive position, like you said, right, uh, as a DCP in River State, and uh, we understand that River State is prone to courtism, uh, River State is prone to uh, violence because of uh, of the oil. It's an oil-rich region, so uh, violence to an extent moves things within that within that within that region. But that is not enough for, for someone to you know, consistently you know, target women uh, in hotel, killed in hotels, kill them, and nobody has been brought to book. All right, and we're not seeing anything happening. It, it took the intervention of the people going out on the street to say what is happening this is not acceptable within river state even across nigeria so uh, for, for me uh, it's not just about finding it finding the uh finding the uh, serial killer we find the serial killer whoever is whoever is the person is make sure the person goes to the to jail make sure the person is punished very very well to to deter people from doing that because at the end of the day when things like this happen all right part of the reason why crime part of the reason why nigeria is a place where it seems like there's a level of lawlessness around the places that 
people that commit crime don't get to be punished. You know, prosecution is very weak in our, in, our, in, our, in, our, in our society. So if something like this happened, there should be prosecution. Uh, the police officer that was in charge, the people that were in charge in these areas, who are they? Why did they fail in their duty? If they should be sanctioned, they should be sanctioned, and the citizens should know that. That is what, that is the conversation was, what we want to hear at this point. So what happens is that, so, for example, for another state within the South South region or within the South East region, the Commission of Police or whoever is in charge, be the DPU, you know, from, from the least level to the highest level in terms of the uh, state, uh, state police hierarchy in each state, will understand that these are not the things that are not permittable in my state. If you just keep quiet, then someone, the first person dies, second person dies, third person, somebody should be quiet, somebody should be penalized. Before we talk about, okay, we'll get the Syria clear and we'll deal with the Syria clear. And, and that thing, I think you are jumping the gun, actually. Yes, of course. Um, I'm, we're going to bring up a, a clip of a conversation we had with the uh, PPRO, that's the Police Public Relations Officer in River State. Okay. But there is also a situation in which in Nigeria we're not accountable for anything, whether it's our governments, whether it's the people, you walk into a hotel, there's no sense of responsibility. So here's what we're saying. The hotels in which these women have died in, nobody knows the names, names withheld. The, these hotels in Nigeria, how many hotels ask for your ID card? How many of these hotels hold on to ID cards? Because this is one of the things that the women are protesting about. There is no data protection or data collection system in Nigeria, except you're no, they, maybe they, no, going to get your license. But no. if you check into a hotel, do they ask for a means of identification? Even the phone numbers they take, do they call those numbers to be sure that they work? And again, the most important part of it is, when a person checks into a hotel with a woman and leaves alone, who goes in to be sure that you know, all is well. well There's well, no well, checking system. Well, for me, uh, like I always say that uh, part of the mistake we make in this country that we, we make, for every crisis moment that we have, we lose it. We don't learn from it. We don't get better from it. So for me, uh, what has happened in River State over the last few days, of the last few weeks, uh, the, the people in the hotel business, hotel management in Nigeria, across, in River State, are supposed to take this in as, okay, what are you doing to improve security in your hotels? Because the truth is, is there, there, we have data, all right? Uh, it depends on the hotel. There's some hotels you move into, you have to make sure that you provide some reasonable uh, ID card that they can believe that belongs to you and everything. So there's some, there's some ones that you can go, people call it for a short time. You, know, you just dash into that place, do whatever you want to do as an adult, and leave the place. But that aside, we, uh, the, the hotel management and the people involved, because even if police doesn't want to release the name to, to the general public, maybe because of is is sensitive, they're trying to manage that as, as much as they can. At the end of the day, whoever that was in charge, the people that were should be penalized. If it means them losing their license, they will lose their license. All right, that's what I'm saying. Talking about punishment and, and, and prosecution, it doesn't make sense that you you have a hotel, somebody comes into your hotel, kills somebody, and walk away scot free, and you're allowed to continue to practice uh, hospitality business in River State. It doesn't make sense. So for the state government and and um, and the security agencies there should understand. Okay, what happened? Who failed at their duty? So once we get because at the end of the day, sometimes some of these things happen because there is an inside man that is working with somebody like this to, co to commit this atrocity, to commit this killing. So it doesn't just happen from the blues. The person just doesn't just come in from the mass, or let's say just person just land from Pluto. But, you, jumps, but don't you think that people can be that, that daring, knowing that maybe they've gone to those... Because you see, a crime sometimes is not committed immediately. It must have been something that people brood over. Yeah. But it could be that this person has gone to this hotel many times and, and sent some security loopholes and feel that you can walk in and out, and nobody would know yeah, that. That, that. That's a possibility. That's what I'm saying. If for that has happened, right? At the end of the day, when the police is done with the investigation, let's hope they are going to do it the right way, right? Uh, when they when they are done, we should know okay, what happened from the from the, ho the, the hotel part. What happened? The police should go in there to understand what happened. Did this thing happen over a period of time, or did this thing just happens? Was it like a one day event? Person came in, do this, or has this person been here before? These are the information we need to know. And at the end of the day, to make sure that this thing doesn't continue going forward. It, it, I think the right thing, the right thing to do is to the River State government, the people that are in charge of hospitality in, in that city, should make sure that all those that that have been uh, caught up in this whole uh, uh, ugly incident should be penalized. Right? We shouldn't just give you your license to continue practicing hospitality. The first thing is is protection of the lives of your guests and their properties. And if you can't do it, there's no need you're in that business. You can't look for something else to do with your life. Well, earlier on, uh, we spoke with the police public relations officer, Namdi Amone, for River State, and uh, he had a few interesting things to say. He made some revelations, and after that, of course, we'll go, we will get you to respond to it. Let's take a look at what, uh, and take a listen. I can confirm the killings, about eight, eight in number, eight, we lost eight uh, 
it's a uh, young ladies to that uh, to the incident and uh, we're still investigating as that um, yesterday early yesterday we were able to have that one well, it would have been uh, another tragedy yesterday but um the intervention of uh, neighbors you know saved this the situation but the suspect was me was arrested that same yesterday then the victim is in the hospital as we speak uh, so far we have been able to arrest three three of these killers who have made their useful statements to us and um, we are still accounting because uh, we have been able to deploy enough intelligence and our drug mates in across the state and beyond to see that uh, these uh, perpetrators are arrested and brought to justice. What led to that conclusion is that um, the amount of the eight of them, we have only been able to identify two and then um, um, the two that uh, we identified, their families, of course, uh, they, they, they could, we could not trace them to any meaningful uh, means of livelihood. You know, which suggests that um, they were they were into commercial sex working. You know, because um, and the circumstances. They, they were living in a, in, a, in a guest house, you know, where the, the, we are customers to patronize them. So what does just, what does that suggest? So that's why we ran into that conclusion. The investigation is still ongoing. At the end of which, if we're able to establish the identities, we will not know what they're doing for a living. But um, but even the one with the one the one that survived yesterday, she said the same thing that she's a prostitute. So that 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 was what informed our our conclusion. They may not all be it, as the case may be, but from the from the random sampling we did, we questioned the fact that um, we were all called there. So my investigation is still ongoing, at the end of which there are two things will be unveiled, and then the means of level will also be ascertained. That is not correct. I make both to say that because um, in the wake of this killing, the first attack, the commission of police summoned all hotel owners in the state. He called for a meeting of all the hotel owners, and they met in his office where he gave them the matching order, and also made available some security measures that they should put in place in their respective hotels and guest houses. And so he also gave them the ultimatum of 30 days within which to install uh, CCTV cameras and put other security measures in place. All uh, such hotels will be will be sanctioned accordingly. So after that, the you know, the hotel they they went back. We have been having a series of meetings, and then it came to a climax about two or three days ago when we recorded. So we now said, okay, and it is that we, since they were not complying with the CP's uh, directive, so the CP gave a much order that about four hotels should be sealed. So those hotels. Uh, have been sealed, and um, the managers, the managers of these hotels, receptionists, and um, the security of this uh, security of this hotel are, are helping us in our investigation. And so I think um, we are we are really on top of it. The way the way it is, the there is enough sensitization on both uh, uh, the, on the side of the police and the the. The hotel operators themselves, you know, the awareness is high, and they are all giving their, they are all giving their words that they are going to comply um, and then um, assist the police. So the cost of sales now is high, and we are not relenting. The commissioner will have told us that patrol vehicles should be moving around, to, you know, to to check the hotels, and they've also been given the order to to be sending daily reports to the nearest the police divisions. You know, so these are measures put in place to ensure that there won't be a repeat of it. It will be too premature to run into that conclusion for now because the investigation is not going. But uh, the preliminary investigation conduct they showed that um, the style of killing has just been the same. Uh, they just, there is no sign of uh, uh, violence. You know, they just and no strangulation, no uh, no such sign. They will just die and then they will use a, a white a piece of cloth to tie. To tie the victim. So, but by that conclusion, uh, by that, uh, by this physical sense, we, of course, we, we run into the conclusion that it may be 
it may be court related killing or ritual uh, ritual related uh, killing. So, but that is not the end of it. All investigation will be further because um, we have started carrying out an autopsy on on all the disease. So that again will will strengthen our position. So uh, that uh, DSP Namdia Money uh, speaking with us uh, from Lake, uh, from Port Harcourt on the phone. Uh, he made mention of some interesting things. He talked about um, the, some hotels being sealed. He talked about security of those hotels helping the police in investigation. But he did make mention of something that I still find very sensitive, trying to make it look like it's okay to kill prostitutes, giving it a name or sex workers or you know, I, I'm thinking that it's taking away from the fact that a citizen of this country was killed. Well, I think it's sad that uh, we have policemen who still behave like that in the 18th century, uh, priding themselves as part of our uh, intelligence, agent, uh, intelligence uh, 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 officers. Because it is sad, like uh, what, what Mr. Molly said and Mr. Mwamu, the, the DCP, Deputy Commissioner of Police, is, is see the same thing, you see the same psych, you see the same mindset. You see, uh, bringing him back to Lagos, all right? Sometimes in the night, if you move around in the night, you see police trying to arrest women because who are, who are sex worker, and for and 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 at the end of the day, you see some of them will come out to say that this this policeman uh, harassed them, molested them in terms of doing all these things. So, and then, at then at the end of the day, is is sad that our policemen do not understand that sex workers they have their human rights. And the most important is that they should be protected. Uh, nobody should trample on their rights, right? That they are sex workers is what they are does. They are consenting adults. They decided to do that. And but the most important thing is that their human rights should not be trampled upon or, uh, because they are doing what they decided to do. Mm -hmm. And and they are not they are not hurting As, anybody. So yeah, it is illegal um, prostitution. The word is so heavy to say. Sexual workers are illegal constitutionally but there are people who know that these people still function in society and people in society patronize them we're not here to argue about that no, sometimes we need to point out that sometimes this, people can people can uh, place anything and say that it is legal there was a point in life where where slavery was legal it doesn't it, it, it wasn't the right thing that something is legal doesn't make it right right and sometimes legality is a construct of the powerful so anybody that is powerful can decide to pin something down and say it is legal so it doesn't just make sense that is legal doesn't make it right it doesn't make it doesn't make it uh, an honorable thing to do because you are giving police people you are giving some people uh, the right to trample upon your rights. Like it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't change the fact that it is against their and human nothing, rights. And nothing should trump your fundamental. And no, human nothing rights. should trump anybody's fundamental human rights. They, are, they, they have the fundamental, the fundamental human rights. They are Nigerians. Right? They live in Port, uh, the River State. See, they have their rights. And it's sad that the, the governor of River State is is a lawyer, uh, for, for, for my understanding. So yes, yes. if if something like this is happening in your state, your, your wife is a justice. If something like this is happening in your state, you are not at the top of it because at the end of the day, the governor, uh, yes, Mwike is is the chief security officer in that state. So there, there's a okay. part, there's a part of the failure that we have to say that the government has failed in doing what it's supposed to do. You're supposed to be on top of this situation. Things like this shouldn't be happening. What the, whatever the police are saying now is what they say the fire brigade approach. Because at the end of the day, the police officer said I said five with my own count. The the the, the, uh, the PRO said eight. Mm -hmm. So already you see eight people have died in River State over the space of one month. And the governor is still there driving around, you know, so it does not make well, sense. Well, let's d uh, join um, Honey. Honey Ojuku is uh, an honor person with Cool FM in Port Harcourt. She lives in Port Harcourt, uh, and uh, she is actually one of those who are uh, in the forefront of protesting and trying to get the attention of government and the police on this issue. Hello, Honey. It's good to have you join us. Hello, Marianne. All right, so honey, um, I know that you've been granting interviews all week on this issue. Um, this will not be any different. Tell us exactly um, what the atmosphere is like in Port Harcourt, because we've seen pictures of women protesting at government house, women protesting uh, to police stations. Why did you think that it w you had to add your voice to this? Okay, first off, yesterday it was really crazy because a lot of women, over 300 women, were at the NUJ premises and kicked off from there and went to the governor's house. And uh, they were dressed in black and they were calling out the PH serial killer who reportedly has been killing girls in hotels. So the way it is now, a lot of people are careful. Uh, the update is that the serial killer, that, that you know, according to reports, allegedly has been found 
and is in police custody right now. So a lot of people are happy about that, but we're still looking out for updates on, on, on if he really is the person, because according to the CCTV camera footage, the face of the man is, is prime suspect. Okay. And I, 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 I'm curious because the police has, the police is of the opinion that these women were somewhat sex workers. And, and they're also suggesting that this must have put them in harm's way. But I'm asking, as a woman, whatever should your job, uh, you know, be a, a reason why your life should not be protected? And I'm not saying that, you know, illegality is right, but should we be painting that narrative instead of talking about it from an aspect where a human being was killed? Well, that shouldn't really be a problem. Obviously, they think that the women are prostitutes, but first off, they're women and they matter. And because you think they're prostitutes doesn't give anyone the right to just kill them like that. Okay, even if it's wrong to be a prostitute, they should be uh, charged to court or some justice given or not. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Saying that they're prostitutes and that's the reason why, you know, this is happening to them. It shouldn't happen. There are also they're, people, they're, there are people who are asking questions like, what were they looking for in hotels? Why, did, why should they go to a hotel? So it, we're being more judgmental than asking for the heads of these killers. A lot of people said that even when we were tweeting and talking about it, even in the streets, some people were saying that they were prostitutes. Yes. Maybe they were not supposed to be in the hotel, but so many stories have come up. Some people say that there were vendors who came to the hotel to sell, to sell their products to a certain lady, according to some story. And some people say, yes, they're prostitutes, but we are not sure exactly what they were doing in the hotel. But it's not enough for anyone to harm them. So I'm just wondering, all of a sudden, um, there's this wave of women being killed. And I'm, 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 I don't know, has the, there been any coroner's report uh, or investigation as to if their body is intact or there's been, uh, you know, organ harvesting? Have you heard any such? No. Apparently, what, what we notice is that the ladies are tied up with white handkerchief. The pictures that are all over the Internet show that they are tied up, but there's no case of... Um, their mammary gland being cut off or anything like that. They're just tied up in a suspicious way. Okay, finally, before I let you go, uh, how, are you, how do you intend as a, a, a journalist, uh, alongside with other women and female organizations, to make sure that this investigation is followed through to the end and, of course, something favorable comes out of it? First, I'm kind of crazy because... Um, uh, journalists in Nigeria have a lot to do, but how we're going to do it is we're going to keep talking about it. We're going to keep going to the to the police stations. We're going to continue addressing it. We won't have to talk to the chairman of the Nigerian Hotelers Association to make sure that CCTV cameras are installed in every hotel in Port Harcourt and Nigeria, River State in general. You know, we have to keep talking about it. Also sensitizing young girls and men out there. Let people know where you're going to. And they come no be address anymore. Do you understand? We have to continue talking about this. It's not just happening in Nigeria. It happened in some places in South Africa. We just have to keep talking about it. And journalists have to share, share info about it. It's not just about playing music, enjoying yourself. Okay. Let's talk about these things. They're happening and it needs to stop. Thank and you. the government too has to get involved, honestly. They have to get involved with everything they've got. All right, thank you very much, honey, for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Well, Honey Juku is uh, an honor person with School FM Port Hackett. Okay, you could, uh, Ugo Juku, before we wrap this up, <laughs> there's a lot of things, you know. Before the elections or in the thick of the elections, children miss. And half the time, you, you, when the, the children are found, they're missing body parts. Same thing for even adults. But in this case, the women are just killed. What should the government be doing? Because we all have a role in all of this, but yes, how do you think government needs to address this so it doesn't happen again? I think the, the primary duty of government at all levels is uh, protection of lives and properties. 
and we should, we should all get that clear. That is the primary duty of government and primary duty of government and government at all levels, from the local le level down to the federal level. When you fail to do that at every point, you are failing at your basic responsibility. And that shows that you're a bad leader or you're a bad uh, supervisor, whichever position you are handling. So for me, uh, you shouldn't. I, I think the, one of the problems I have with us in this country that when things like this happen, people just the PR and everybody will just go back home and we all sing kumbaya because they've, they've just they brought out a name that we don't know whether this person is the right person that we are that was called. We've not seen the coroner's report. We've not seen the information down to the end. In a serious country, somebody should be penalized for this. Somebody should lose their job for this. Both at the police level and everything. The, 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 uh, there's something I, I saw on, on, on Instagram, uh, the CIA page, right? They say something very, very interesting. They say they're in, they're in the business of anticipating things happening. So we should have police that is not reactive. Don't just wait when they see something trending on the internet, they react it. We should have police, we, have, we should have security agencies that their primary duty, they, they should copy their friends, their brothers that work or their brothers organization, state organization abroad to see that anticipate crime. Look at this, what, what is going to happen? What do you think is happening? Look at this information. It's not when a crime has happened. You're asking, uh, you're asking, you're mandating uh, the hotel owners to put uh, security uh, CCTV camera within one week. Some of them might not even have the money, they might not have budgeted for it. So if you know already that when, when, when a society, a lot of things can happen. So we should be, we should be, we shouldn't be reactive in our thinking in mm. terms of our approach to security issues. We should all be, we should, we should be proactive. Okay, what is happening? What can happen in the next six months? What can happen in the next one year? We should forecast some of this. In. That is part of security. That is part of intelligence gathering. If we have all this intelligence gathering, if we have people that are working, because I don't know, there's no way something happens. Police is asking, do they have CIs in the community? Do they have people that can give them information? Oh, so that's, that's that a whole kettle of fish on its own. I think we shouldn't go there. We will go there another day. <laughs> but I want to say thank you. Ugo Chikuyukako is a political analyst. He's not going anywhere. He'll still be here. Uh, when we come back, we'll be talking about, um, you know, their looks. Uh, we're seeing looks uh, and they're, you know, moves uh, from the NLC that there might be another strike once that. We'll be back after the break.